everybody, welcome to Campus Comics Cast, coming to you from Carbondale, Illinois, with special guests from the Campus Comics crew, and now, here's your host, the man with the previews in hand, Mike No. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Campus Comics Cast. Coming to you from inside Campus Comics in Carbondale, Illinois, here at 816B East Main Street, uh, right in between Mike's Music and Plaza Records. And we're going to take you on our monthly trip through the previews catalog. Um, this is the catalog for June 2018 for things that, for the most part, especially published stuff, is going to be in the stores in August. Um, if you hear anything you're interested in or whatever, just uh, give us a call here. Um, the cutoff for this catalog is June 29th, so that's when I have to have my orders finalized. And believe me, that's when I'll finalize it. Cause you <laughs> <laughs> so I don't do it early, so I, you know, we're good right up till that day. Um, if you want to get a hold of us, uh, you know, there's the address, like I said. Phone number is 618-457-6011. And... Uh, just reach out to me, uh, message me on Facebook, or uh, just come into the store, pick up a previews, or just uh, tell us if there's anything you're interested. Well, before we get started on this uh, little journey here, I'm being joined by Dan Brown and Scott Reed. All right, and we're going to, before we start in on the previews thing, we just uh, coming off the heels this past weekend of the uh, Superman celebration down in uh, Metropolis, Illinois. And Dan and Scott and myself were all down there, you know, working it. And uh, I had a pretty good time. How'd you guys, did you guys enjoy yourselves? Had a real good time. Oh, yeah. So. yeah. It's always interesting and it always amazes me because, uh, you know, the, that is the only town and that's the reason for the whole thing. That's the only town named Metropolis in all of the United States. And it's just not that big of a town. It's more like Smallville. But uh, <laughs> the population, it has to more than double you know oh, definitely oh, yeah. during the celebration so it's interesting to see all that and uh, kind of had a running total talking to some of the other vendors not a total but kind of comparing notes and the farthest away that i had a visitor that i got to talk to is a guy bought like four steel comic books steel comic books from the <laughs> 90s and he was yeah. super thrilled to have them you know but he was in from australia wow and he came specifically to observe the 80th celebration celebration 80th anniversary of superman and to attend the celebration mm -hmm. so he's going to do some other stuff but that was the main you know idea for his trip so there are lots of people who scheduled their vacations uh, and trips around the superman celebration i hear that in, oh, yeah. every, a couple times every year so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and years ago i ran into somebody from france there too. Yeah. So, like, people come from all over the world for this, you know, and you wouldn't think it to see the town, right? You know, but they've got Superman, so that brings people in. That's it, and that's when you kind of realize, you know, it's just like, you know, I mean, with the rebirth stuff, Superman's kind of had a little bit more uptick, you know, but a lot of times he's not like the greatest seller, you know, character, right. but you right. realize the the iconic, you know, the iconness, I guess, of the character <laughs> once you start realizing the fan base he does have and it's not just in the u.s you know i mean it's everywhere around the world and so it's i mean he is a character that started the whole concept of you know the costumed powered superhero you know yeah, I mean, it's like i like to tell people it's superhero not spider hero yes yeah, that, <laughs> that's very good that's very true so, the Su superman celebration always does a good job about uh, bringing in like artists and stuff as well especially like the last i don't know six to eight years or so they've brought in some some historically great artists like Carmen Infantino and yeah. George Perez. And, and this year they, they brought in some artists, uh, Alex Saviuk and Art Baltazar and, and our, we have another episode of the podcast. I think it's episode 15 where I did an interview with Alex Saviuk, where he talks about his time with the, uh, on web of Spider-Man and, and some uh, things that he has going right now. So if you haven't listened to episode 15 yet, there's an, it's only about a 10 to 12 minute interview with Alex Saviuk, but he provides some good insight and maybe some buying tips for those of you who would like to speculate on a few comic books. But I'll let you listen to the episode before I, before you, uh, before I tell you. So. No spoilers here. Huh? Nope. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's another nice thing about the celebration that they have down there too, is, you know, there's a lot of media guests and like actors who've been in some of the movies and TV shows and things, but they're always really good about getting some artists from the comics too. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's hard to get to meet the, you know, celebrity, you know, the mainstream celebrities, 
but you know the artists are usually pretty accessible and like they'll usually do like a q and a with them and mm -hmm. things like that like i you know went to the one carmine infantino had when he was right. there and that was, you know, really nice to see, you know, he's passed now. So it's like, that's not going to happen again. Yeah. That's one of the nice things is with the exception of the year George Perez was there, there's, mm -hmm. there is almost seldom a very long line there. So usually within 10 to 15 minutes, you can get to talk to any of these artists that you, yeah. that you want to. Amanda Connor, Jimmy yeah, Palmiotti had, had a decent I line, but nothing like, nothing out. like the George yeah. Perez line though. <laughs> 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 But, uh, but, yeah, it was a good time, you know. So if you ever have heard about it or if you haven't heard about it or whatever, you know, but it's definitely worth the trip, especially if you're just a few hours away. You know, it's definitely worth the trip. It's a nice experience, you know, and it's, it's a small town thing. You know, it's more than just the – there's the convention within the celebration, but basically the celebration is their – you know, their local festival, mm -hmm. like a lot of the small towns yeah. have in rural areas, you know. The, so that's basically what it is. Then with the added twist of the Superman thing. And it's really, I think, um, with that, aside from going to like a, a Wizard World or, you know, to one of the big conventions, mm -hmm. things like that, it's your best um, option, I think, and still have a small town experience and get to see yeah. some yeah. of those high-level quality cosplay mm -hmm. people, oh, oh, you yes. know. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it really beats pretty much anything you see at any of the local cons, you yeah. know, in the area, the stuff you see there. People do travel there for the costume yes. contest as well. Yeah. We so. were, uh, Mike and Dan and I, we were all set up at the Metropolis Supercon, which is something that's actually technically totally separate from the Superman celebration. So, uh, but uh, that will probably continue going on each year. So that, quite honestly, if it wasn't for the Metropolis Supercon, there wouldn't necessarily be a whole lot of comic books available yeah, there for, wow. and a lot of the, you know, other pop culture type things. So that, I think that was a nice add-on for the Superman celebration myself, but I'll, you know, I'm starting to brag a little bit, I guess. So but no, I'll stop. That was good. I agree. I agree 100%. <laughs> yeah, no, it seems like there used to be some comics and toy vendors and stuff there as part of the celebration, but you don't really see that anymore. No. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine they would just kind of put their lot in with the Metropolis Supercon anyway. Yeah, well, and when there was a guy that was set up on the streets and then when the rain started, can you yeah. imagine having, you know, 40 long yeah. boxes of comics and mm. it's pouring down rain outside? Mm. So I, yeah, I'm surprised anybody ever set up would set up like that. So, yeah, yeah. He was struggling this weekend. <laughs> yep. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, speaking of rain, that's only the second time I've ever had rain when I've attended this. Oh, it's cool. always usually a really nice weekend or a really hot, hot. weekend. Well, it's, yeah, it's going to be warm. It's always warm, but like, it's always, you know, Usually don't see rain that weekend. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. Timed out pretty good. So, you know, speaking of uh, other the convention that's going on there, there's a couple other conventions we want to point out, you know, that are coming up here locally, you know, that we want to talk about. And uh, the first one is kind of going to be a repeat of last year, which started out at SIU in the Student Center, and it was called EclipseCon last year due to the, you know, the total solar eclipse, you know, that that happened and you know Carbondale being at the crossroads of that you know where the you know we were location of the you know the longest duration so they decided to have a comic con tied in with that last year uh, well I guess they did well enough that it's they're going to their plan is until it loses money is to keep continuing to have it every year and it is an actual event that's a sanctioned SIU Southern Illinois University at Carbondale event you know that will take place in the uh, in the student center um, they're on campus and it's the this year it's going to be just called Saluki Con I think that's the the or the Saluki Comic Con Saluki Comic Con, Saluki Comic -Con. so that's going to be the official name other than until the eclipse happens again and what, <laughs> whatever it is six more years we yes, happen right, to have yep. another one so uh, that's going to be September 29th and 30th mm -hmm. which is the uh, the family weekend there at SIU too so that's uh, the weekend when you know the students are in and their their families come in to visit and they kind of you know just take a tour of the campus and everything like that so a little bit of the uh generated hysteria that, that happened last year <laughs> that kept people away won't be a factor this year mm -hmm. so you know just come on down to that it should be a good time i think the uh, games uh, part of it is pretty greatly expanded from what I've been hearing from Nathan Bonner. I think it's a well. The only more. the only important part is 
they got a they have Trevor Von Eden as their special yeah, guest right, this year, yeah. who's co creator for Black Lightning. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm most excited about for the for the convention myself. So Right. Well what I'm most excited for is the campus comics booth. That's That'll right. That'll be there. <laughs> yeah. That, well that's that's number one. But number two <laughs> would be the appearance of our of our partner in crime here, Scott Reed, who's and also will be there, yeah. But so, even that is second to Trevor Von yeah, Eden. Trevor. Yeah. So All right. But he's, it's, you know, it's one of those things where we just don't often, like Metropolis Superman Celebration, we don't often get a chance to get a lot of celebrities in this area, especially right. comic book celebrities. Mm-hmm. So when they do come, we need to go out there and support those events. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I think he did some, uh, Trevor Von Eden, too, did some, I think, Batman Legends of the Dark Knight. I think he was a... Yeah. He, he, has a he has a quite a bit of stuff. Yeah. I know he worked on Green Arrow and yes. Chill, or no, not yeah, Chills, Chiller, Chiller. Uh, thriller. I can't remember what the title of the book was, and I just looked at it today. Oh, yeah. um, the but DC he, book, yeah, Thriller. Thriller. Okay, thriller, yeah. yeah, he did. He did that run, and mm-hmm. and uh, he did some like Marvel fanfare back uh, back covers, mm-hmm. and so he's got a pretty good history, and he's still, I think, relatively active. I, th- I saw in like 2017 there was some variant covers that he had mm-hmm. done some work on as well. But uh, mm-hmm. but with the success of the Black Lightning TV show, this is a this is yeah. a really good get, I think, for Carbondale to yeah. Yeah. to have him come in. Mm-hmm. So very good. I think that'll draw some interest. Okay, and that was September 29th and 30th. Well, that's not the next one we're going to no, do. Yeah, I said the no. next show we're going to do. I'm, you should have <laughs> thought that's, that's Scott, all right. you know, but got those out of chronological order there because yours. Well, yeah, so, well, um, in July, July 8th and 9th, there's a small convention in Lawrenceville, Illinois, called FWACCON um, that I'm going to be, that Berg Comics will be setting up at. So if you are uh, in that area and listening, to, then think about stopping by there. But then on August 18th, uh, just a one-day show in Harrisburg, Illinois. We'll have Berg Comics Con. This will be the ninth year for that show. And our special guest this year is Don Kramer. And he uh, worked on Wonder Woman. He's done work on JSA, Dr. Fate, lots of different titles for DC. Detective. Det- I mean, he had a good run on Detective, Detective. with Paul Dini and stuff. Okay. Really good stuff there. So I'm looking forward, again, that's, you know, a great opportunity to have a you know a comic pro come to the area so uh, the convention's free to get in uh, would love for you to come out and uh, have your support uh, provide your support for that convention so mm-hmm. and scott won't say this but i'm always uh, i'm always really impressed with the how that show's laid out i mean i think <laughs> yeah. i think you i mean really you do a good job you know it's like a one day show you're yeah. the you're the guy behind it you know the the level of talent that you've had the, oh, yeah. the stars the, the people that you've had to come as your guests is very impressive for a show of that size Thanks. so i mean it's just you know you do a lot of hard work and it's appreciated and it, it's really a really great show for for the area and for the size that it is and you know it's got a great hall you know that yep. you hold it in and everything else so just kudos to scott on that good well it's, show. it's really it's all up to the vendors the vendors quite honestly probably pay a little bit more for tables than what they would for a show of this size but um, because we do not charge admission for people to get in so it's just kind of like a nice community event and uh, Mike's giving me more credit than I deserve because I basically throw out tables and contact people. <laughs> the, probably the, the one thing that I can say about the show is, is like we have 45 tables. I've been sold out since, you know, March or, or early April. Um, I have like six or seven vendors wanting to get on the wait list. And every single year, like out of our 40-something tables last year, I think like 38 of those tables are returning. So mm-hmm. the vendors that are there keep coming back. So I guess that's a sign that it does okay. Yeah, so. it does. It really does. <laughs> Yeah, and even you know, even though it might sound like it's a smaller thing here, there's still plenty of stuff there, and you know, mm-hmm. there's other local artists to meet and things like that. Mm-hmm. At the yeah. event, it's always a good time. Yeah, we've got a surprising, you know, it's not a surprising amount of people locally that you know what I yeah. mean that do that are involved with that kind of stuff and or have been involved, you know, professionally at one level or another. So it, it's always a good mm-hmm. time to come and see those people and just chat about comics you know you're there with a bunch of people with a similar interest that's the great thing about you know owning a comic shop or going to a you know a comic convention of any size you know is everybody there has got something in common so if you've never been to one this is a good initiation into one you know and campus comics and berg comics will be there yes we will <laughs> as will dan most likely yeah. you know, there's a guest or work with me i don't yeah, know we'll, we'll see, see how yeah <laughs> we'll or see. both yeah, yeah. Could be both. Yeah. <laughs> but dan will definitely be at the the saluki con that we mentioned yeah. in late september he's mm-hmm. going to be there was there so come out and yeah, meet us there there's some good cosplay at bird con too right there there has been yes. yeah so actually the uh the the i guess you probably should talk about it. the couple that won the bird oh, yeah. the bird comics con costume contest last year uh they were dressed up 
for Superman Celebration this year. I'll let mm-hmm. you go into details on yeah, that. Yeah, uh, what they did is they won the costume contest at Berg Con, mm-hmm. the Berg Comics Con last year. And, you know, with their winnings, what they did was buy a, uh, it's the Diamond Select uh, replica bank of the uh, Shakespeare bust that, you know, on the uh, Batman 1966 TV show where they would flip back the head, you know, and sp- turn the dial and press the button to open the doors to the Batcave. Well, I had a vinyl bank there, and that's what it, there. It's a uh, one-to-one scale. It was full size. So they uh, they used their winnings there to, to pick that up from uh, Campus Comics. And uh, what they told me at that time was they were going to use that as part of their cosplay for this year where they were going to... Uh, Again, as a couple, be uh, Aunt Harriet and Alfred the butler from uh, the Batman TV show. And they showed up at Superman Celebration in costume. But I was, I don't know, it's kind of silly, but it's kind of proud to be part oh, of that. Yeah, you that know? Really neat. Yeah. And, and if you want to see pictures, be sure you hit the Campus Comics uh, Facebook page. There's mm-hmm. some pictures there. And I will try to, if you, they're not already, I'll try to send you some pictures for you to put up of their costume at Burger okay. Comics Con last year where they were Ma and Pa Kent. Right. With oh, the, yeah. yeah, so if they're not already there, I'll, I'll, yeah. send the, I'll try to send sure. those to you. Yeah. Yeah. Get those up pretty soon. And we've so. got to run into them again. I know. Because our pictures got screwed up. Yeah. Them, so. Yeah. Oh. We had some pictures, we had some pictures taken with them. Dan and I did, you know, and uh, asked uh, another guest there in the room to take the pictures and what ended up happening and I didn't, think to check the pictures before they the, the, <laughs> before they the couple off. left and it's just like either alfred or aunt harriet were cut out of the picture it was never a picture oh. that had all four of us in there <laughs> so always always check your picture yeah before that somebody learned. people run off and you can't yeah. find them again <laughs> yeah and it was too hot to go chase yeah. them yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Road to try to do that well again. we can do a little photoshop yeah. maybe we can fix that yeah. there you go <laughs> get some of that but uh all right. Well, with that said, guys, you want to go ahead and uh, jump into looking through the previews catalog. I'm going to be a little bit of a slacker and duck out here and leave this okay. in the, the uh, very capable hands of Scott and Dan. I just have some other previous commitments I got to take. Well, not really previous. It kind of came up last minute, but got to go take care of those. So right. we'll catch you all later. We'll all see right. you next time. All right. I'll try not to let the bell ding as I go and <laughs> mess up your recording. All right, so in the DC previews here, on starting on page two, we have issue one of the Sandman Universe uh, by Neil Gaiman. Lots of different artists on this book. Of course, Sandman is a, cl- is a classic series from DC, so to see Neil Gaiman returning back to these characters is going to be it's going to be terrific. So I'm really looking forward to that. Lots of variant covers it's called yeah Sandman Universe. So uh, I don't know. Did you read much Sandman? Uh, I, I've read it kind of on and off. It's one of those things, like, all my friends read it, and I just never really got into it. And the other the other part of the thing with me is just uh, Vertigo in general is I started reading when I was so young, I couldn't read Vertigo books. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know, technically you're supposed to be 18 to pick mm-hmm. them up. Most stores will stick to that. And so my habits developed without Vertigo. <laughs> it, it was kind of neat you know? where you would introduce, like, you know, they have, like, Martian Manor, Manhunter show up in an, in an right. issue, and he's, like, recognizes, you know, Morpheus immediately. So it's right. it's uh, it's kind of neat where it's kind of on the fringes of yeah. the DC universe. Well, the thing is, though, too, they got away from that so much, too, later on, because mm-hmm. they didn't want kids reading the Vertigo books. So it was a hard line of this, like, Swamp Thing was Vertigo for a long time. Right. Did not appear in any DC proper books. So I they d- really separated that. Have they said, like... So it says story by Neil Gaiman, but then we have all these other writers in here. Does it? You think he's just kind of like producing it? I have sort of no thing, idea. Or? Maybe he's just providing the basic plot or yeah. something. But it's I'll definitely give it a shot. I do. I do want to see the Sam Keith variant cover because I love be. Sam Keith's work. Yeah. Uh, right after that, on page four, we've got Pearl number one and Scarlet number one by Brian mm-hmm. Michael Bendis, and this looks like this is part of his Jinx World sort of pop up imprint he's got going at DC. Okay. So it looks like that's some of the uh, new stuff he's doing for them. Do you feel like he's hedging his bets on Superman just a little bit here? I feel like this is... I don't think so. I know it could definitely be perceived that way with the reaction Superman's been getting, Mm -hmm. but I feel like this was just part of their pitch to him, of bringing him over from Marvel, of just giving him whatever he wants. And I think putting a pop-up imprint behind him is something you know they've done with Gerard Way. Okay, it's something I think it's probably a way they're gonna you know entice talent to come to DC at this point. You know he does have his creator own books. You know Scarlet is something he's done before. He's been talking about getting back to. I think Pearl is a new project. 
I can't remember hearing about that before. Yeah, one thing I think is kind of nifty on those two books is the primary artist on Pearl is Michael Gatos with a yeah, uh, variant yeah, yeah. cover by Alex Malev. Right. And then you look at Scholar Number 1, yeah. the arts by Alex Malev with a variant cover by right. uh, Michael Gatos. I'm yeah. I'm probably a little bit more interested in the Scarlet mm -hmm. title myself just because yeah. of those two's work on Daredevil. I, I like that Yeah, and I've run. never picked it up before, but I've heard, heard good things about it, and I know some people are looking forward to that book coming back, so... In August, you can pick that up. I'd also go into those those two books. I thought it was kind of interesting where they point to just DC's pointing to Jessica Jones and Daredevil in their catalog as examples of their work together, which right. I thought was kind of funny. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, after that, we've got Batman and the Justice League manga vol volume one. Uh, this is something that was produced in Japan around the time of the Justice League movie. And I, I was kind of interested in this. I was hoping they were going to bring it over and translate it. Just because it's, you know, a different story we don't have access to right. over here. The characters just look wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's that manga yeah. style, you know, is what it is. Uh, it's always going to look a little off to a traditional American superhero audience. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and then on page seven, seven after that, mm -hmm. we've got Batman Kings of Fear, which uh, the return of Kelly Jones to Batman. Right. So I'm going to be all in on this. Kelly Jones is a favorite Batman artist to a lot of people. Yeah. So. And uh, there's a variant cover by Bill Sienkiewicz, mm -hmm. and I will definitely want to check that out, too. But I will for sure be picking up the regular Kelly Jones cover. Uh, I'm a little interested in this, too, because uh, Scarecrow looks to be part of, like, the, probably the main villain of the book. And they're not really showing his design of Scarecrow on this cover mm -hmm. here. And, That's a shadow. Yeah, and on his original run on the Batman books, you know, he was, it was basically just an on-model Scarecrow for the time. And I felt like... Kelly, if Kelly Jones left to his own devices, I think he would come up with a much crazier looking scarecrow. So hopefully that's what we get here with this. Uh, after that, we've got DC Superhero Girls, The Search for Atlantis trade. Um, going back to uh, the Metropolis Supercon and Superman Celebration, we right. had the free comic book day DC Superhero Girls mm -hmm. book that we gave out to a bunch of little kids this weekend, and they all were excited to get it. Oh, so yeah. if you've got a younger reader, maybe some of the superhero books are a little too advanced or too mature for them you think this is a perfect you know book for a little girl mm -hmm. you know a lot of them yeah you know, we had some uh supergirls there that were dressed up in that version of the costume of the supergirl costume <laughs> so kids like it my next thing's not until 19 so okay. you can just go until 19 well on page 11 we've got the return of some more uh, dc superhero and looney tunes crossovers a bunch of them yeah um I think the one to probably keep an eye on this time will probably be the Harley Quinn Gossamer special. <laughs> Again, people just want everything Harley Quinn. It's by, you know, it's written by Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor again. It's one of those things, though, too, where it's sort of maybe not on everyone's radar that wants everything Harley Quinn. And those are the books that kind of slip through the cracks mm -hmm. and you end up paying a lot for later. So <laughs> definitely keep an eye on that if you're wanting to get all some of the art Quinn. some of the artistic interpretations of some of the of some of the looney tunes characters are are pretty interesting to look at yeah, as well like I, sylvester and tweety and the catwoman episode and right and Daffy Daffy Duck. Duck looks bizarre. bizarre yeah yeah i really like the lex luther porky pig version of porky pig though <laughs> this might be a first porky's got pants yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, that's true. Mm -hmm. And he's sitting in a barber chair with Lex Luthor. So <laughs> that's probably one I'll pick up, too, just to see what that whole concept is behind that story. Uh, yeah, and I don't have anything good for a while. If you okay, want. so, well, page 19, we just have a continuation of Tom King's run on uh, Batman. So here we've got uh, artwork by Lee Weeks, and it says it's kind of reexamining the relationship between Batman and Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. I I've heard a lot of other people and people on our podcast talk about whether or not the 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 secret identity is Bruce Wayne or if the secret identity is Batman. If it's Batman right. pretending to be Bruce Wayne or if it's Bruce Wayne pretending to be Batman or something else. I don't know if right. you had a what's your stance? What's your stance on that? <laughs> I mean, I've always felt, you know, I've always been in the camp of he is Batman. Bruce Wayne is the mask he puts on. And again, it's a more romantic idea, especially right. for a superhero story. It's cool. <laughs> you know, but I, you know, I can understand that. And I, you know, it works to, for that character. The thing is, though, DC has gotten pretty bad, at, you know, last, you know, quite a while now, I guess. But just sort of not having a lot to do with the secret identities anymore. Right. You know, you rarely, you know, aside from Bendis' current run, you don't see 
Clark Kent and the Daily Planet too much anymore. Mm-hmm. And if you do, it's for a page. You know, right. page counts have gone down. Stories have gotten smaller. Even with the decompressed storytelling of, you know, geared towards collections, it's like the secret identities have gotten the short end of the stick mm-hmm. for quite a while now. So to have a story that kind of reexamines that will probably be pretty good and probably something the books need. Right. I'm not having some DC till 51. Okay, well, so. on 22, we've got the second issue of the new uh, Catwoman series by Joel Jones. Um, again, the first issue hasn't come out yet as we're recording this. I'm just kind of taking note of this cover because it's uh, Selena Kyle's Catwoman being accosted by a bunch of other women in Catwoman costumes. But it it's hard to tell from this drawing if this is just in shadow or if she's got a new costume in here. Right. Because I don't see the goggles Uh-oh. on the suit. Uh, everything else is kind of in shadow. I'm kind of hoping she gets a new suit because we've had the same suit since Hush, I think, which is years ago yeah. now. Catwoman is known for having a lot of different outfits, and you know, every few years she gets something new. So hopefully, Joel Jones has come up with a cool new costume for her to have. Some kind of. Hopefully, that's what that is. Uh, let's see. I don't have anything again for till 43. Keep going. So, 51. So keep okay, going. so uh, on page 43, we've got Mr. Miracle number 11. Which I think is the next to last. I think that's a twelve issue series. Um, again, I haven't been reading it. I only hear good things about it. This just stood out for me because we've got a really, another really good cover by Nick Darrington with Dark Side on it, and I, I'm just loving the way he draws Dark Side on these covers. It's really <laughs> cool. I hope he gets a chance to do some interiors or more with that. On 47, we've got the third issue of the Plastic Man miniseries that I think just came out today as we're recording that with the first issue. Uh, this one stood out for me just with the Alex Ross cover, where it's a takeoff of his cover to Kingdom Come number four, where it's just sort of like Superman standing in the uh, fallout of that battle. But it, it's, you know, Plastic Man, so it's a little more comical than the super dramatic Kingdom Come storyline. I had a note for something on the Terrifics, and I've lost the page number on that. Oh, okay. Well, um, 61 is 61. Where the Terrifics are in the catalog. Okay, all right, so 61. I must have just typed in on my notes, typed in the wrong oh, number. So okay. 61, so you got Terrifics number 7, and it's part one of a storyline with Tom Strong. I guess this is the first time we've seen Tom Strong in the in the new DC Rebirth universe. Or, yeah. I think so. So uh, he's again, a character that was kind of like an imprint, not really part of DC proper for quite a while. And then I guess they're bringing him into the fold. Yeah. It seems to be the, we don't care about Alan Moore's concerns anymore. <laughs> We're going to do more Watchmen. We're going to bring Tom Strong into this. You know, I don't know what kind of relationship they have with him anymore or if it's a concern, but you know, they're, definitely, they're probably not worried about it. Yeah. They're so. definitely sort of integrating more of his concepts into the DC universe now. Uh, back on 58, we've got uh, Superman number two, you know, the Brian Michael Bendis run. Uh, so far, I haven't been too impressed with his writing. It's a lot of, no. it is it is a lot of classic Superman, I'll give yeah. him that. But it's also Superman I've read. Yeah. Yeah. That I've, I've, see, I've seen this before, you know, and I think that's kind of what the criticisms are leaning towards. I don't even know if I would consider it classic Superman. I would consider it. Superman movie, Superman yeah. is kind of, kind of you know, yeah. or the bumbling. We got going back to the bumbling right. Clark Kent, and I feel like and you know John, John Byrne yeah, took care of sure. took care of all that, that away. And, and now we're going back to that. Yeah. So I, and Jeff Johns and Richard Donner did some of that on their run too. But again, that was with Richard Donner. You're mm-hmm. gonna do that. And here we've got it. You know, it looks like Superman is trapped in the Phantom Zone in a flying sheet of glass, glass. basically, mm-hmm. which is. Yeah, we'd kind of gotten past that portrayal of the Phantom Zone <laughs> in the comics, and it looks like we're back to that now. Um, but again, I know, like, Bendis is, you know, sort of like hometown hero with Superman. Yep. On uh, page 66, we have Wonder Woman uh, numbers 52 and 53. And I don't know if this has already happened in the comics or if I just missed this or what, but it looks like we have a new version of Aztec in Wonder Woman. That was a short-lived run a book by Grant Morrison and Mark Millar back in the day that was really good. Uh, The character went into Morrison's JLA run and died at the end. And there were in the Rock of Ages storyline in JLA, we show, we were shown a possible future with a female Aztec. And so that looks like that's who is here in Wonder Woman now. So I'm definitely going to 
check that out. And if you're a fan of Aztec, maybe look that up. On page 67, there are some uh, re-offered again trade paperbacks. Uh, one of them I was going to point out is The Flash by Mark Wade, uh, book one. A lot of people like the Mark Wade run yeah. on The Flash. So here's a chance if you you know don't have that and want to read it, you can go ahead and get that ordered. Okay. On page 68 <laughs> is probably the thing I'm most upset about in yeah. this entire catalog this month. <laughs> this is the Action Comics 1000 Deluxe Edition hardcover. Mm -hmm. This is what we thought we were getting when Action Comics 1000 shipped. Uh, so this does look like this is the hardcover deluxe version of the actual issue and the content. Um, Looks like it has the same cover as the regular issue yeah. 1000. Just this is what a little hardbound one, right? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, I wouldn't. I mean. I would imagine DC might recolor it a little differently or something when it mm -hmm. actually comes out. They seem to do that now and then. I still haven't read Action 1000. I need to do that at some point. Yeah, it's worth reading, but it's also like, why didn't this just come out? I feel like they're not saying it, but I feel like somebody didn't get their stuff turned in on time and they couldn't get the hardcover to the <laughs> press yet, you know, to make that deadline. But, you know, I think we had some people upset about that. I'm upset that they're doing this now. But what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> On uh, page 70, we've got a bunch of uh, Batman Nightfall uh, collections coming out. Mm -hmm. The one that kind of stood out for me was the Prelude to Nightfall, which kind of collects uh, Ven the Avengers of Bane special and some other books leading up to the actual Nightfall storyline. Some of these could pretty hard to find, actually, because mm -hmm. you saw a big sales bump at Nightfall, so there's a lot more of those issues out there. There's these ones leading up to up it to that her. are a little harder to find and probably a little pricier. Uh, I would say the only thing to add to that would probably be the Sword of Azrael miniseries, which I'm not sure if that's in print or not, but that's probably something mm -hmm. to read, too, if you're going to read this and kind of want to get the whole story before Nightfall. Was Sword of Azrael prior to Nightfall? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was thinking it came out of Nightfall. No, so. it was it was probably, I want to say it was in between the Vengeance of Bane special and Nightfall that came out, but I might be wrong. Again, I was like 11 <laughs> when all that came out. It's hard to keep that straight. And those all have Kelly Jones covers on yeah, them as so well. So it's Kelly Jones month uh, yeah, in DC. Nothing previews. wrong with that. Nope. On 74, we've got a new uh, collection of uh, the Bat Batman The Gates of Gotham deluxe edition hardcover. And this, I want to say, is the first Batman story Scott Snyder did with Kyle Higgins. Uh, it's kind of a cool mini series. And it kind of deals with sort of uh, the actual literal building of Gotham City. And a lot of, pretty much any time before this, whenever they kind of went back to that story, it always kind of felt like filler. It didn't feel like a superhero story. It wasn't very good. This one is definitely worth reading. This is a good superhero story. Snatter creates a good villain that I'm surprised they haven't brought back. Maybe they're reprinting it now because they plan on it, but I kind of hope he would at some point. But if you like Scott Snyder's run on Batman, definitely check this out if you haven't already. And, you know, along with that, there's also a Court of Owls uh, Essential Edition coming out with that collecting kind of that another story history line. of uh, Gotham a little bit in that yeah. storyline as well so yeah on uh, 78 76 76 all right we've got Batman Catwoman the wedding album deluxe edition hopefully it's what it's supposed to be we'll see <laughs> it says it is page 78 uh, you have Dark Knight 3 the master race uh it's a trade paperback, so if you missed out on that, I actually enjoyed this story. Oh yeah, there were a there were even a couple of really really nice wow moments for me in this book. There's a nice you know throwback to the the cover of the uh, the Dark Knight Returns uh, image in in one of these books and the true answer between who wins the fight between Superman and Batman you can find uh, in this story <laughs> as well. So uh, so I, anyway, I really enjoyed Dark Knight three. You know, Frank Miller returns to that character, so something to think about. On 81, we've got The Impulse by Mark Wade and Humberto Ramos, Omnibus. And if you're going to pick up the mm -hmm. Mark Wade Flash, you'll probably want to check this out, too. Impulse as well, yeah. Again, this is a run I never really picked up, but I know a lot of people like it. I know my uncle liked it when it came out. So maybe if you're a fan of Mark Wade and Speedsters. On 82, we've got a couple Justice League of America collections. Uh, we have Volume 5 and Volume 7. I'm not sure where Volume 6 is at. <laughs> I don't know if that was listed last month or what the deal is, but there should be another trade in there, I would think. I'm not, I don't know if they were doing a crossover then or what the deal is with that. Yeah, that 7, I guess, is that Christopher Priest run, so I need to yeah. be sure I pick that one up myself. So, 
Yeah, and I don't have anything to about the end of the catalog. Okay, so page 88, uh, they're again resoliciting the Watchmen uh, in a DC Modern Classics edition. I think they're doing this with the Dark Knight Returns as well this yeah. month. But with the, I guess, the HBO series in the works for Watchmen. I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, <laughs> then uh, if you want to get up, get ahead of the game on that, uh, you might want to pick this up. And, and I think a lot of people, you know, when they're like when you're especially when you're reading Doomsday Clock right now. I know initially I had forgotten that the in movie ending and the comic ending were different. Oh, yeah. So when one character shows up, it's like, how can he be there? He's dead, but he didn't have to have died because right. of how the comic actually ended. So right. if you haven't actually read the comic, it's pretty close until you get right to the ending on the movie. So If you haven't read the comic, why are you listening to this? Go read this. <laughs> yeah. You should have read it by now. Yeah, this is, this is one of those must-read books. Just go to so. yeah, pick it up at the store or go read it at Barnes & Noble. <laughs> I don't have anything else in DC. So okay, I'll finish her out. On page 94, we've got this month's uh, Batman Black and White entry. And this is by Hiro Kuwata, is my guess. I'm not 100% on that pronunciation. But this is based on the Batman comics produced in Japan in the late 60s that were recently collected in the Bat Manga collections. Um, you know, we don't get a lot of merchandise for that stuff, so I think it's pretty cool that they're doing this statue. Uh, I was kind of hoping they would do action figures through, you know, then DC Direct or something. But uh, I think it's kind of cool we're getting a statue of that version of Batman. It was a you know, long forgotten part of Batman's history that, uh, you know, they've recently unearthed and put out there. And I, I've read all of them. I really enjoyed that book. Uh, hopefully, you know, they do more stuff with that version of the character. And I think that's all I have for DC. We want to go to the Marvel, Marvel. catalog. Yeah, on Marvel. So. Because you demanded it, Scott. Yeah, I did. I don't remember demanding that. So, no. but anyway, page two, Fantastic Four number one. Yeah. Finally, we've been they've been hinting at this for several months now. I'm going to go back to page one. Real okay, quick because then you go back to because page one. they show the Fantastic Four by Kirby classic, classic poster, poster, which mm-hmm. was previously solicited, and they didn't show what it was. Ah, it's okay. one of our favorite game in the Marvel catalog, yes. <laughs> which we get to continue this month. And so we do get to see the poster. I was really hoping they would go. I mean, maybe this isn't finished. I would really hope they'd go all out with the coloring of this because they do that sometimes with classic Kirby pieces and it looks really nice. On a, on a side note, I got a notice about a cancellation. There was going to be a True Believers Fantastic Four number mm-hmm. one dollar issue and it has apparently been canceled by the publisher yep. because of some stuff I believe that we're going to talk yep, about we're, later we're, in this one. We so. are going to get into that. Don't worry. Okay. All right. So, But yeah, Fantastic Four number one, they're back. Dan Slott mm-hmm. writing and all I really want to say about this is as much as they're hyping it up in this catalog and getting me worked up for this book, it better be good. <laughs> for as long as you know they've put Fantastic Four on the back burner. No uh, like, okay, John, now you may not know the answer to this, and since Mike okay. had to bail on us, back on page one, so mm-hmm. we both gone back to page right. one. Celebrate the launch of Fantastic Four number one with a midnight release on August eighth, the fifty seventh anniversary of the original series release. Mm-hmm. You have any idea if he's planning on doing that? I'm gonna say no. I would say probably because not, but there's all I guess just so customers know too, there's gonna be some midnight releases on July fourth. For the Batman 50, the wedding issue, and Captain America number one, Mm -hmm. the store will not be participating in those midnight releases, but you can come in on the 4th of July when you're off work, duck away from your family in the grill for a minute, (laughs) come and get some comics. Uh, We will be open that day. 11 is regular open time, I believe so. Um, But yeah, we will not unfortunately be participating in the midnight release of those so i doubt we do for that but again you know back to fantastic four number yes. one so many variant covers yeah, 16 pages of Oof. fantastic four to start the catalog but yeah. to me the cool one is on page nine where we have fantastic four issues one and two yeah. with connecting wraparound covers by arthur adams yeah those are really nice mm-hmm. i'm re- i really like the alex ross one too a couple pages before um I'm not sure if that's based on anything. It's almost sort of like a generic kind of old school Fantastic Four, but mm-hmm. I really like it. However, uh, I talked to Mike earlier about the likelihood of getting those variants right. in, and it is very it's slim. slim. Mm-hmm. There's some pretty crazy hoops you have to jump through to get some of these variants. Um, hopefully, right. hopefully the Sarah Pacelli variant won't be too hard to get since she's the regular artist on the book. Yeah, hopefully that is readily available 
All right. Um, so, so page 10. That's, yeah, getting to your point. You want to go first? Go. You want me to go first? Uh, you can go ahead. Right. Now, okay, so here they have what they're calling Fantastic Four number one facsimile edition. And this is going to reprint everything, including the original advertisements from Fantastic Four number one. Now, my big fear is that this is going to be one of those books that people are going to try to, you know, a year or two from now, oh. people are going to rip off covers and try to pawn off as an original Fantastic that, yeah. Four number one. So I, I would just say this as a, you know, be careful moving forward. I don't know how, surely they'll, they've learned their lesson on this and there will be some things in it that are obviously, you know, not you know, uh, making it making it not a first print, but you never know. Sometimes, whenever they right. do these these editions like that, so. yeah, and that's something you know. I we were kind of talking about in the store the other day too. Is hopefully in the Indica, it will have the 2018 date, mm -hmm. and that's when you open the book. Usually on the first page, not always with Marvel now or DC, but if you look at the bottom of the first page, there's that tiny little fine print text. You want to go through that just sort of as a rule. Whatever the most current date is down there will probably mm -hmm. be the year that book came out. I know a lot of these books, though, they had the Indica on the inside of the front cover. Yeah. Though. So if they're doing a facsimile, yeah, right. so that could, again, yeah, but prevent problems. Yeah. yeah, either anywhere it is, though, just kind of keep an eye out for that. Yeah, it, hopefully it's not on the cover because then, yeah, you get into the thing of replacing covers. And I know, like, there's a, there's a Fantastic Four 66, which is like the origin of him, Adam Warlock. There was like a later Stridex edition of oh, that. Yeah. And the only difference is the back cover has a Stridex ad. Right. That's the only way that you can tell that yeah, from boy. the. And so when people on eBay, they'll post those pictures and they only will show you the front cover. Real, real easy to get burned on, on yeah. some of those books. And then Pizza Hut many years ago did oh, a, a yep. giveaway where you could literally rip off the covers and pawn it off as a very, very old comic because it was in, t in the insides identical. Yeah, and I, I think I have a couple of those. I think they're even real kind of newsprinty kind of, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, pulpy paper on that too. So, <laughs> All right, off the soapbox. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but no, so but, well, this, this book is why the True Believers yes. number one got canceled. It is going to be replaced with a reprint of Marvel 2 and 1 number 1 the new series that's okay. just come out oh okay uh, it's a good issue i already have it but that's the thing i already and it's have it's fairly it. recent yeah it is but if you did miss out and you know not marvel's not great about allowing you to reorder stuff if mm -hmm. you did miss out and you haven't picked it up pick this up it's a good story it's worth reading and, and um, the other part that stinks is the True Believers comic was going to be $1, yeah, and this oh, facsimile yeah. edition is $4. Well, I think they probably looked at that and be like, which one are we going to cancel? Yeah. The mm -hmm. dollar one or the $4 one? Yeah. So we all know how that goes. Uh, we got a bunch of other Fantastic Four variants yeah, for, six, other, for again, other 16 titles. pages worth. <laughs> so there's some nice ones in there. There's some that are like, eh. But... Uh, on page 17, we've got Extermination, which looks like it's uh, the new Marvel X-Men crossover. Uh, something to do with the original team, I guess. Well, I think Isn't this dealing with the all-new X-Men that got pulled into the future? Yeah. Is that what, so they're going to resolve some stuff with, yeah. with them, I think? There's the character on the cover of number two that I remember him from an old crossover. I cannot think of this guy's <sighs> name, though. He's got the purple armor and the mm -hmm. big harpoon. Yeah. And I totally cannot remember what his name was. I know we have some books with him in here in the store, too. I do not remember what his name yeah. is, either. Ugh. Yeah, so after that, we've got Infinity Wars. I wonder why they called it that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we've got this new character, it looks like, who I'm assuming their name is Requiem. I kind of had to look around. That's, I saw that and just turned the, turned the page. Well, so it doesn't really jump out at me too much. But. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be crossing over into some other titles and things. My thing is, whoever designed this character thought they were being cute putting uh, the infinity symbol around their goggles mm -hmm. and it looks like you've got varying success with the different artists mm -hmm. on how well that translates it, to me it just makes the, I, I, every time I look at that character's face it reminds me it looks like Spider-Man to me so yeah. I mean, there's no there's no webbing but it just yeah. reminds me of Spider-Man so. yeah uh, on 25 well 24 I guess we've got a new West Coast Avengers number one mm -hmm. I always kind of like the old school West Coast Avengers um, I've heard them speak to why they haven't brought back West Coast Avengers. It's, they feel like it's just sort of an outdated concept. Kind of goes along with fax machines, <laughs> where it's not really uh, prevalent to our modern society. But my thing is, like, okay, so what's the concept here that made them rethink that? 
you know, unle- unless this is just they want to hold on to that copyright. I that, I think that's probably you know. what it is. They they need a place for some of those characters they don't know what to do with, like you know, Kate Bishop, Hawkeye, right. and, Gwen and, Poole. Um, yeah, Gwenpool in America, and what is that the the kid um, that Quentin Quire, the one and. Maybe, um, yeah. I'm not who sure who the other one is. Yeah, what does it say? Kid Omega? Kid Omega, yeah. Because he's like the he's like son of uh, the champion from uh, the Shi'ar Empire. Sure. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I may be missing him, messing him up with somebody else. So. I, I mean, I don't know. I would assume he'd be related to Omega Red. Yeah. 26 and, 26 and 27, we have the Punisher, uh, number one, new number one and number two. They have some remastered Mike Zek covers, but I thought we were already past the War Machine, but now it says you can take the Punisher right. out of the War Machine. Right. So apparently now we are finally done with right. Punisher in the War Machine uh, armor. So. Yeah, and this concept actually interests me because they're saying like he is past, you know, he doesn't have the armor now, but he still wants sort of the bigger Big targets, targets to go yeah. after. So I'm like, this could be something cool. Mm-hmm. I'm really a big fan of Garth Ennis' run on Punisher, uh, Jason Aaron stuff, but mm-hmm. like usually Punisher's pretty hit or miss with me, but this is something I'll probably check out. Yeah, he's one. Of, always been one of my favorite characters, so I always give the... I, I keep buying the Punisher no matter yeah. what, so I bought some crappy Punisher books, and I bought some good Punisher books, right. so... <laughs> On uh, 29, we've got Venom, first host number one. Looks like a new miniseries. Uh, what interests me about this is Mark Bagley's drawing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like the issues of Venom he did during Legacy, and he was only on it for four issues, so it looks <laughs> like I'm getting at least five more, so I'll probably pick these up. I don't have anything until 37, so... I think that's what I've got, too. Okay, well, all right. So, actually, my thing on 37 is a bit of a complaint on okay. 37. So, now, I will be buying this book... However, <laughs> Captain America would never let the oh, flag drag the ground. So we have point. artwork here on issue number two, and Cap's holding the flag in his right hand, and the tail of the flag is on the ground. So that's maybe, I, maybe that's part of the story, but I, I don't think there's any story that Cap would allow that to happen. Maybe it fell down, Scott, and maybe, Cap's picking it up. Maybe. We can hope. That's what the case is. But, <laughs> I hadn't uh, thought about that, but you're totally right. Yeah, so that's kind of a, I don't know, we'll see what happens. I'll go give it a shot, but uh, that is, that's something he would not do. <laughs> I like the remastered variant cover by Jack Kirby, which mm-hmm. has Cap uh, on the moon. Yes. <laughs> in a sort of a cap space outfit. I think that's probably like one of those Marvel promotional like yeah, images that they're sticking it, on a cover. Yeah, yeah, it looks like some kind of poster or something on mm-hmm. that text. I'm not sure what that's from. And, and it I, says Apollo on his shield instead of just the star. So. Oh, okay. I, know know I, I, I missed in, that. Tied yeah. into one of the space flights maybe or Almost something. Almost certainly did. So. But that's kind of cool. And I, that Ron Garney uh, variant cover is also pretty sharp as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm nothing until 76. Okay, what so. do I got? Uh, flip, flip, flip. Yeah. I got some, oh, uh, page 64 and 65. We've got X-Men Grand Design, second Genesis number two. Kind of wrapping up the second of the miniseries of Ed Fisker doing with the X-Men. So kind of retelling their history in a much more concise way than right. if you read them. <laughs> yeah, so. All hundreds and hundreds and hundreds yeah. of issues. Yeah. Well, while you're flipping on page right. uh, 76, um, I would not normally pick up Old Man Logan. Issue 45, though, has a really, really nice Frank Miller homage uh, cover where uh, Bullseye is running Wolverine through, hearkening back to Daredevil 181. So I think it even says, you know, after Miller here in the in the yeah. signature on the on the cover. Yeah, so. but that's Mike Deodata mm-hmm. drawing it too, right? It's not it's not a Frank Miller cover, but no, you know, no. kind of taking its influence from that yeah absolutely uh on 83 we've got x classified number two and we still don't know what this is <laughs> uh, everything is still classified except the price so maybe that'll be something cool probably not 108 my next thing uh, 92 uh in some of the star wars books we've got a beckett special coming out and that is woody harrelson's character from the new solo movie uh, so probably telling some more backstory on that character. So that could be like a cool story. It's uh, Jerry Dugan writing it. Uh, and a variant cover by Terry Dodson. So I'll probably, I mean, I get all the Star Wars books anyway, but I'll definitely want to check that one out. Yeah, we'll probably do a solo review here sometime and then probably our next like episode. Like just one of us? Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Uh, on 102, we've got uh, Marvel Universe by Frank Miller Omnibus, and this is Frank Miller work. Yes. Uh, it looks like maybe everything he did for Marvel except Daredevil or something. It looks like these are probably just like the odds and ends of things mm-hmm. he did for Marvel, but they're all kind of collected here. And they kind of have a neat Spider-Man cover, but I'm not sure what that's from. 
I don't I don't recognize it either. You know, I'm almost wonder if it was like a pin up for an anniversary issue or Could something be. like just a one off kind of thing. I think that spectacular Spider Man twenty seven twenty eight was where the first time that he drew Daredevil. Oh yeah, yeah. In in that was like a two issue Spider Man's uh, blind, so Daredevil mm-hmm. is teaching him how to oh, you cool. know operate. On 106, we've got the Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale yellow, blue, gray, and white omnibus hardcover. And this kind of collects some of their uh, color-themed miniseries. And these are all... I haven't read all of these, but, you know, the ones I've read have all been really good. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely something worth checking out. I know I've read three of the four. I can't remember if I've read Hulk Gray. Yeah. I think I have a couple issues of it, but I don't think I've ever finished it. The Daredevil yellow and the Spider-Man blue basically... It's almost like Spider-Man and Daredevil are going through therapy, and it's like they're writing. <laughs> if I remember correctly, they're writing letters to Karen Page and Gwen Stacy, uh, kind of after yeah. the fact. So it's kind of a origin slash story. They're actually pretty solid stories. Right. So. so I assume you want to talk about the next thing. I will. I was going. Yeah, I was just going to mention it. One hundred eight. <laughs> uh, so they, I guess we have the twentieth anniversary of Marvel Knights. Yeah. So they have a few collections uh, going on, but they are again another reissue of Black Panther by Christopher Priest mm-hmm. in trade paperback. So I assume they'll continue that line in these in these new series. And they also are doing uh, Daredevil, which is the Ke- Kevin Smith uh, Joe Casada right. run on Daredevil, which kind of jump started Daredevil back oh, into yeah. uh, to a point where he was probably the best Marvel title for. I don't know about the next seven eight years uh, yeah. when that when that run started back up. Yeah, the fun thing about uh, Kevin Smith's run too is um, apparently at Marvel there's a list of rules that first time writers aren't allowed to break in their storylines. <laughs> he breaks every one of them in his storyline. Oh, okay. <laughs> so keep that in mind if you go back and reread it or something. Kind of see if you could figure out what all he's doing <laughs> and like what <laughs> rules he's breaking. I heard some stories that. on that where he was he was trying to put too much detail into the plots and it was causing him to get behind. Of course, he's mm. notoriously slow, I think, um, for some books. Like he had even like right. one book that never ever finished because it became yeah. irrelevant. Um, but he was trying to give the 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 artist too much detail and too uh, much panel right. by panel <clears throat> layout. So um, on one eleven, keeping with the Fantastic Four theme, we've got Fantastic Four by Wade and Warengo omnibus hardcover. And this is a great run by Mark Wade and uh, Mike Warengo on Fantastic Four. For me, this is like probably one of the top three or four runs on the book. Uh, for me, Fantastic Four is a must-read when you have a good creative team on it, and this is it definitely is, yeah. one of them. Um, of course, you know, Mike Waringo passed away years ago, so we're never going to have sort of a reunion on that. But this is, you know, to have everything here collected like this is really nice. I already have all this stuff, but if you don't, definitely pick this up. Again, it's a $100 cover. It's 20% off here in the mm-hmm. store, so that's, you know, around 80 but and it sounds like a big chunk, but it's worth it. This is a really good run. It's if you haven't read this, definitely something to check out. Yeah, it's you know it's over thirty issues. Yeah. of Fantastic Four. So, and it does have the uh, direct. They call it the director's cut, sort of a special edition of issue five hundred two in there. On one thirteen, you know, there's some more uh, Fantastic Four trades, and we have the Behold Galactus, which I think was solicited before. I'm still not sure what's all in here. If it's just that initial story or just like a best of Galactus. But it also says presented in monster size format. I don't know if that's treasury size. How big is this? I don't see dimensions listed no. for this. Uh, Hopefully not treasury size because that's just too big. I almost want bigger than treasury size. Really? If, you're calling, if it's a Galactus yeah. thing and you're calling a monster, <laughs> like I want yeah. something that's going to stand out on the shelf. And that you have that you can't put on the shelf? Man, maybe. <laughs> I, got a, I got a couple books like that already, so... <laughs> Uh, my next thing's on page 124. Okay, on 121, we've got uh, some Venom collections. Uh, there's a movie coming out. I don't know if you've heard or if you want to. But uh, what I kind of noticed was the Venom Adventures Digest. And it looks like this collects some of the Marvel Adventures Spider-Man. And I don't see too much of that stuff in print anymore nope. from those uh, runs they did. But those lasted for a while. So it looks like it's that, and then some, uh, you know, Marvel Universe Ultimate Spider-Man. So, if you're, and I think those are kind of like all ages books they did too. <laughs> kind of just funny doing Venom as an all age. Yeah, villain. that's the thing. That's also what kind of stood out for me, and it's a real kind of cartoony cover. So page one twenty four, we have a Star Wars Thrawn trade paperback. Oh, yeah. So if you were a fan of the, um, uh, 
gosh, Thrawn trilogy. Yeah. Uh, then that's something I I've been waiting for this to pick up this story. Yeah, I think the yeah, maybe the last issue of that came out today as we're recording. But I've been reading that. That's been really good. I'm really liking that miniseries. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm a trade paperback holdout, yeah. so that's what I'm I'm picking that up in trade. So. 126, we have Captain America by Mark Wade, Promised Land trade paperback. I'm assuming this is the fairly recent uh, Mark Wade run on the character. Yeah, that's what's still going on right now. Yeah, so that so. trade is being solicited. And 131. Yeah. Okay, so am I still good? Or yep. you, uh, We have uh, Volume 4 trade. This has been solicited in hardback. Our hardcover, I think, but uh, this is the War Thor, still part of the Jane Foster storyline, and I really, really like uh, what they did with War Thor, which is another Thor that pops up. So I won't spoil that for anybody who hadn't read that. So I think we did spoil it a few months. Did ago. we? Do? Yeah, I we probably so, but, did. But shh, if it you is forgot, cool. it's in cool. case you've forgotten, I'm not going to say it again. Yeah. So <laughs> on 133, we've got uh, New Warriors: Darkness and Light trade, collecting the 90s New Warriors book. Uh, I can't remember I, th I feel like they've done some other new warriors collections recently i'm not sure why uh, i know there was that tv show that was supposed to be happening that i think has been put on hold okay. uh i'm not sure why else they'd be soliciting uh, new warriors trades but <laughs> if you're a fan here they are yeah. page 135 iron man 2020 the trade paperback yeah. increasingly irrelevant <laughs> <laughs> iron man 2020 well i I remember reading this when it first came out. There was a uh, space, I think, Amazing Spider-Man annual, and then like a Machine Man a limited series that was set in 2020. And I remember reading that and thinking, 2020 is so no, far yeah. into the future, and right. we're almost there. Yep. <laughs> so they got to get it in print quick. Exactly. Before, uh, before. It's 2021. Exactly. <laughs> uh, was there like a? Do you? I don't know if you remember. I feel like there was like a hardcover of. Iron Man 2020 years ago or something like that. I assume that's, you know, the original version of this I don't, or something. I don't remember a hard Maybe cover, it was a collection or something. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember one, but that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. That's uh, all I got in Marvel. Okay, so. the only thing well, I got the, yeah. is our favorite game of the Marvel posters. And we've got all... They're showing us all the posters this month except Seth for a one. Thanos poster. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not again, not sure what that is. But, you know, we've got... The Captain America 2 poster that Scott doesn't like. Yeah, well, it's just got a little problem. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a legitimate gripe. Right. So, so they, is that it for Marvel? That's it for Marvel. Okay, so, so we'll get going on the previews, previews catalog proper. Yeah. Get the big thump of them hitting the table here. Figure right. out which side I'm need yeah. to be on here. Flip it over a couple uh, times. So, starting off with Image. This well, one. actually, okay. We talked about the uh, comic shop tales cartoons. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the first time I actually read the comic oh, shop okay. tales on page seven. <laughs> so I just want that to be known. Okay. I did read that for the first yeah. time this month. What, what were your thoughts? Uh, it was fine. <laughs> Do you feel like they're trying to rip off out Bar Art Balthazar? Uh, with that art style. You know, I didn't really think it about looks, it that much. It's but, always uh, very similar to me. Well, if, if they've, how long has this been in the previews? Uh, I couldn't tell you. I mean, because if it's definitely goes, definitely longer, than we've been doing this podcast. Well, but I'm just but thinking yeah. if it's if it's been in there since preview started, then obviously, uh, yeah, who, so. who knows? But uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very similar style. It doesn't look bad though. It's nice, but yeah. Uh, the first and, thing and I, speaking of Art Balthazar, by the way, he's one of the most awesome guys to talk to at a convention, and he basically does free sketches for people. It's a, they're little marker crayon type things, but uh, especially for kids, but they are a lot of fun, and he is a very entertaining individual to talk yeah, to. Don't hold him to that, though. Don't be like, the Campus Comics cast said you'd do a free sketch for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, for little kids, so. for little kids, yeah. So, you know, adults, you know, they should, you know, go above and beyond what yeah. he asks for. Keep in mind, this guy travels and yeah. deals with people all day. And, and, he, uh, and always has a smile on his face. Yeah, and if you, you know, deal with the general public for very long, you know how difficult that is to do, so... Um, and then, of course, don't forget, you know, if you want to follow along to order your previews on page 27, and you have to order the DC and Marvel. Well, the Marvel comes with everyone, but you got to order your DC separate, I think, so, or something weird like that. It's yeah. crazy. I it's, don't it's, know. It's a pain. This, this catalog's getting to be a mess. Yeah. And, I, and I told Mike that I would leave my copy of the DC previews here if there's somebody who just wants a DC preview. Right. So, so there you go. All right. So, Image. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, you got anything before me? I'm on page 41. 65 is 60, my first okay, thing in well, Image. I only got one thing in Image. On 41, we've got the first issue of Hey Kids Comics. 
and I can't believe someone hasn't taken that title already. <laughs> you know, sort of reminiscent of the old uh, spinner racks from back mm-hmm. in the day, but it's a uh, story by Howard Chaikin, uh, and it looks like it's sort of about some history and things like that. Uh, the solicit here reads, artists and writers comment and clowns, gunnefs and gangsters create the foundation of today's biggest entertainment business, or at least the tail that wags the dog. <laughs> So maybe some insider information from Howard Chaikin from working in the business so long. You know, sort of a nice photo cover on this, so it might be something worth checking out. Uh, let's see, I think my next thing... Oh, yeah, is on 48. We've got the Walking Dead uh, graphic comic book box, and this is a you know a short box for your comics with some nice art from the Walking Dead mm-hmm. around it. Yeah, that could probably fit a lot of your Walking Dead... Most of your Walking Dead comics in there, I yeah, bet. I'd, yeah, as long as you aren't like all the variant collectors, you'll probably get the majority yeah. of them in there. Uh, whoops. While you're looking, sure what page this is. Page 65 mm-hmm. has the final volume of Killer Be Killed by Ed Brubaker. Okay. So if you're following along with that series, it's wrapped up and the last trade can be solicited this month. Uh, on page 84, kind of at the end of the image, we've got the uh, Stranger Things action figure series 3. And this is like the versions from the second season of Stranger Things where we've got Mike, uh, punk version of Eleven, and Will solicited here so if you want to pick up some stranger things action figures those are coming out and i've seen them in stores they look pretty nice you know they're good mcfarland figures i, got, I was gonna ask if those mcfarland so, toy figures. yeah so. so they're always really good on detail uh, dark horse, on dark horse. Yep. yep all right so page 86 uh the seeds uh number one new story uh with art by david asia who did like hawkeye and yeah. immortal iron fist uh they kind of show a little preview of the art so it's basically black and white though with like this green tint so yeah. it's kind of a um kind of a little bit odd it's also written by ann nascenti who did a fairly lengthy run on daredevil um, so this is like, you know, sometimes I'll have like an image book that I'm picking up just for the heck of picking up something. Well, this is, it's a dark horse book this time okay. that I'm picking up just for that reason. Um, I think it actually looks pretty interesting. Um, it's another, let's see. Yeah. It's another story though, where it's like tech has gone wrong type of a story. Mm-hmm. So we were seeing a lot more of those in comics, especially from the independent guys. On uh, 94, 94, we got okay. the Super Mario Brothers Encyclopedia. It's uh, the official guide. Uh, this is like a limited edition hardcover they're coming out with, uh, and I think it comes in a slipcase, it looks like. Yeah, it comes in a hidden slipcase, yeah. and you don't know which cover you're getting when right. you buy it, which kind of sucks. Well, I think the fun part of that is the covers are the red and green mushroom, mm-hmm. the flower, and the star. star mm-hmm. So it was the items you would get in the game, game. if you're hitting the bricks. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of a fun thing yeah, with that. The, but yeah, if yeah you, the question mark block slipcase. Yeah, so. if, you, uh, if you have your heart set on a particular one, you might have to wait till these end up on eBay or yeah, something. Somebody's got to open them for you so, yeah. so you can see which one you got. So, But just have fun with it. Chill out. But whatever. it is a Super Mario <laughs> Brothers, <laughs> yeah. so... Page ninety-seven. We've got yep. a new Predator story. So I guess I, and I guess I didn't realize there was another Predators movie coming yep. out. Shane so, Black. Okay. All right. Uh, so there's a sort of teaser trailer out now for it. Uh, no uh, key from Key and Peels in it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Olivia Munn. <laughs> Sounds like sort of a different kind of thing, but we'll see how that is. Page oh. ninety-eight. Uh, another Terminator story, Terminator uh, Sector War, written by Brian Wood. Uh, they're basically going back to the original Terminator movie, and they're having another story alongside the story about Sarah Connor, where there's another person who is important to the future, and another t- a separate Terminator is going after this particular character, who is a New York uh, police, depart- uh, police department officer. Yeah. So. And again, new Terminator on the way next year, I'm pretty sure. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, yeah, so Cameron is getting the rights back. That was part of his original deal was, I want to say, after 35 years, he gets the characters back and everything. Ah. So uh, I believe um, director of First Deadpool, I Tim, Tim Miller. Okay. Tim Miller, I believe, is directing the new Terminator with Cameron producing and I think the take is everything after Terminator 2 didn't happen. And I'm fine with that. I, you know, I was all right with Salvation and Genesis, but yeah, yeah they were, I, I, they were okay, I won't begrudge them. Two is the best Terminator movie they've done. Really? So I yeah. liked one of the best, so I like the first one. You know, I like well, Michael Bain as an actor. I think he's a, oh, a, yeah. I, like, I liked him in Aliens and... Um, so I just I just like him as an actor in those sci-fi yeah. action type movies. So, so I mean I don't know, but this could you know be setting up something for that new movie too with this okay. Terminator miniseries. Uh, that's all I've got for Dark yeah, Horse. Um, IDW. I don't yeah. have any 
Okay, IDW is next, I guess, right? Yeah. So, all right. So it looks like we've got the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Bebop, and Rock City hit the road. <laughs> and this is a sequel to a mini series they did last year. And again, it looks like a week. They don't have the release dates on here, but this looks like it'll be a weekly release in August. And I think, I want to say August also has five Wednesdays this year. I could do the math on it, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I could look it up. On, I could look it up on my phone, but I'm not going to. I think it is though. And so we have got five issues here. And so again, kind of what they did with the uh, Star Trek miniseries in May it was a, a sequel to something successful previously that they're going to do as a weekly book. Yes, August first is a Wednesday, so we will so, have yeah. we will have five. We will have five. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like one, that's what that is. One thirty-seven. Uh, until I've run out of opportunities. Rom. There you go. Uh, it's actually the complete ROM store with all the one shots and the regular store. And that's lines. just the IDW stuff. That's just, right? not, yeah, not G- the I'm original sorry, Marvel. The IDW right. ROM. So, which also, I, you know, I bought it. I'm going to buy this. It's what? not super good, but. Have they done reprints of the Marvel stuff? or No. Can no. they? Or? I don't know. See, the, I don't, did the superheroes cross over into that, the Marvel characters? Yes. Okay, yeah, they so did. I bet they probably can. Yeah, I know there were some early on, out. there were some uh, Doctor Strange crossovers. Oh, and, yeah. And ROM went into, like, X-Men. The Dire Wraith stuck around a long time after ROM. There was right. even a Avengers X-Men uh, crossover, and, and like, um, Storm loses her powers for quite a while, around, mm-hmm. like, issue 186, uh, maybe even before that, and that's actually because of ROM's neutralizer. Forge oh, uses really? that technology and, and removes Storm's power, hmm. so... Um, uh, on 134, we've got Rick and Morty versus Dungeons and Dragons number one. <laughs> if you're a Rick and Morty fan, this might be something to check out. Uh, just them crossing over with D&D in any respect is probably going to be interesting, lead to some good stories. Mm-hmm. On, on next, yeah, 166. So. Okay, on 160, we've got uh, Superman: The Silver Age Sundays Volume One, and this is a series that IBD, IDW has been doing, kind of reprinting some of the old Superman comic strips. And the neat thing about these are, is like, this is written by Jerry Siegel and drawn by Wayne Boring. (laughs) So if you like Silver Age Superman, this might be something you haven't read before. A lot of this stuff never gets reprinted. Yep. You know, and some of them are uh, sort of takeoffs of stories they've done in the comics. So you'll see like a different version of a familiar story maybe sometimes. But I've picked up some of these and they're really nice. And going back to Superman Celebration, the artist, cover artist on that book was uh, Pete Poplaski. And he was at Superman Celebration last weekend. So... Uh, right after that, we've got James Brown, Black and Proud, sort of a uh, <laughs> bio comic about James Brown. Um, really nice cover there. Um, music comics are kind of tricky. Yeah. Because you can't hear in a comic book. <laughs> um, there was a Johnny Cash bio book a few years ago called I See a Darkness, I believe was the title, and that was a really good one. But that kind of works better for Johnny Cash because he's actually kind of telling a story with his songs. Right. And so that translates. <laughs> this looks like it's just sort of like a bio uh, book about James Brown, but it could be a cool story. Again, how well will that work in a comic book? We'll yeah. see. But I think that's it for IDW for me. Well, 164 and 165, several new uh Collections, artist editions, yeah. artist uh, artifact editions. There's a Bernie Wrightson one, Al Williamson on Star Wars. There's the, uh, I guess Howard Chaykin actually did the art for the first St- Marvel Star Wars comic, yeah. I remember correctly. So we have the artifact edition of Star Wars. Uh, there's a Stranko, Nick Fury, which has some pretty trippy covers. And the uh, Frank Miller Daredevil artifact edition, which includes like the cover for Elektra's first appearance. On page 166, uh, there's a Batman, the animated series, Gotham Under Siege uh, board game. So I know there are a lot of people who are fans of Batman, the animated series. And this is also a game that a person can play one to five players. So those Mm -hmm. times whenever you can't find somebody to play a game with, (laughs) if you're one of those people, then there's a game you might want to pick up. I don't think I have anything in dynamite. Yeah, really I don't have anything in over. dynamite. I think it's all kind of things we've been over. Yeah, I don't. I don't have um, anything uh, actually until the back of the book. So okay, you finish well, the front there. Uh, and boom, we've got Lumberjanes: The Infernal Compass, and it looks like they're doing a. Uh, it's the first graphic novel for the Lumberjane series. So if you are a fan of that book and pick that up, don't forget about this because this will probably be something else you'll like. On page. 210, about price far away from Lumberjanes as you could get, is we have WWE Undertaker special. Wrestling. Kind of uh, focusing on the career of the Undertaker. And there's some uh, preview art here, sort of sketches that are kind of implying 
uh, the entire length of his career. So it'll be interesting to see what this book is. Two ninety five uh, is my next. Thing, okay, so. on two the next page on two twelve. There's another <coughs> WWE special. Uh, it's the Attitude Era twenty eighteen special. Kind of looking at some of the uh, wrestlers from the Attitude Era, from sort of the turn of the century in wrestling. Uh, really good matches, some really you know good wrestlers from that time. Something they're still trying to capture today. Uh, probably be some fun stuff in there. On uh, 227, we've got the Peanuts Dell archive hardcover, and this reprints some comics that uh, Charles Schultz did with Dell <laughs> back in 55. So again, some more kind of lost Peanuts stuff that probably nobody's seen for 50 A long years. Time, yeah. Uh, what do we got? Yeah, then it's kind of just on to the sort of back of the book. The back of the book. Yeah. What, what used to be the back of the book. Yeah, I know. Uh, That's the middle of the book. <laughs> yeah. On 279 in the Aspen section, uh, looks like we have a lot of these Michael Turner uh, variant covers they're mm-hmm. offering again. So if you missed out on those the first time, maybe check those out. And I want to say the Harley Quinn one, it was the basis of the statue we saw last month, maybe. I think so, in yeah. The catalog. So if you've got that, pick up the book. They'll make a, like, a nice little display for your statue. Uh, 286, under uh, Bongo, we've got a Bartman, Bartman Spectacular Super Secret Saga one-shot. It uh, just uh, looks like a superhero-themed uh, Simpsons comic coming out. And what did... Yeah, I don't have anything to go 302. Okay, so 295, Capstone Publishing has some prose books, but the DC superheroes, mm-hmm. they're basically origin stories for younger kids. They have Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman um, as prose books. Uh, three... Okay, 307 is my okay, next thing. Okay, 302, we've got a prose book of uh, DC superhero science, and it looks like it's probably looking at... Uh, some of the science behind the superheroes' powers and things like that. I think this is sort of like maybe a lighter read, you know, maybe something good for younger readers too. Several years ago, there was a book that came out called The Science of Superman. They got pretty technical about how Superman's powers would work, and it was a really entertaining read, and it really kind of makes sense mm-hmm. out of what, you know, these crazy things these characters do. So that might be some something interesting to check out. Uh, I don't have anything until 323. Okay, so 307, uh, Dynamic Forces every month has a selection of signed and graded books, um, of course, at a premium price. But the one I thought was worth pointing out was the Sandman Universe Special Number 1 that's uh, signed by uh, Jay Lee. So, or Jai Lee, Jay Lee? I think it's Jay. Jay Lee. Okay, I've so been s- saying Jay since 92, so right. I'm so, not going to stop now. I, I, yeah, I, I, always, like, I always said Jai Lee just because it was spelled different. So. Right. <laughs> um, on 323 from Graphics with an X. There's a lot of Dogman graphic novels, and I think this is Dave Pilkey who did the Captain Underpants books for kids. So it looks like this is another series he's doing now. So if you like those books, maybe check that out. On 325, we have a uh, <clears throat> book called DC Comics Before Superman, Major Malcolm Wheeler Nicholson's Pulp Comics. And this looks like some things the founder of DC did before DC Comics, a lot of kind of pulp magazine kind of things. And then there's another hardcover book called Nukem, classic Cold War comics celebrating the end of the world. <laughs> so probably just some more uh, sort of older, you know, paranoia kind of comics. Might be kind of fun to check out. On 326, we have another prose book, uh, DC Comics, Anatomy of a Superhuman. So it almost looks like a Grey's Anatomy for the book, not the TV show, <laughs> of uh, superheroes and how their powers might manifest physically. Uh, a lot of drawings by Ming Doyle in here, it looks like. looks like did the cutaways and that kind of thing. So that could be kind of an interesting, maybe not for a little kid, because some of these might get kind of gruesome. I don't know. They're still kind of technical looking, but I don't know if you kids want to see a cutaway of Superman's face on there. Uh, I think 394. So. Okay. On uh, 338 from Lion Forge, we've got Goldilocks and the Infinite Bears. And it looks like this is a collection of comic strips. Uh, They're not polar bears, are they? I don't think so. Okay, because you want to have another polar bear love story, do no, we? No, okay, I don't. I don't think that's what this is. <laughs> but I think this is uh, what's his name, Jane John Mc McNamee. McNamee? I have no clue. Sure. But it looks like he you know writes for the Onion and stuff like that. So it'll probably be a pretty funny book, an actual funny book a to funny, check funny out. Book. Yeah. On uh, flip, flip, flip. On 351 from New England Press, we've got a new uh, printing of The Tick Karma Tornado, The Complete Works. 
And I want to say this is the first series after Ben Edlund's original run on The Tick, and this is by uh, Chris McCullough. Again, some fun books in here. Uh, just because it's not Ben Edlin doesn't mean it's not a good Tick book. <laughs> so they've been reprinting some of the other series, and now they're doing Karma Tornado again, it looks like. Again, just a fun title for a book. On um, 362, f- back to Art Balthazar. Looks like he's got a graphic novel coming out called uh, Gilbert, two L's, The Little Merman. <laughs> so sort of a f- creature from the Black Lagoon Fishman looking character, and there's a soft cover and hard cover available of that probably just like a fun all ages book from here and i don't have anything else till 431 all right well 394 like. has from titan uh, if you are the person who likes to get the movie specials and movie adaptions so titan has the predator uh, movie special available solicited this month and that's it that's all i got okay on that on that side all right so 431 in the manga section we've got King of Strong Style. Uh, it looks like it's a biography about wrestler Shinsuke Nakamura, uh, who, if you're watching WWE, you're realizing what a great performer he is and everything. So it looks like this is a book about him. Uh, probably an interesting read. I've read some other uh, wrestling biographies. Wrestlers always have good stories. <laughs> they always see crazy stuff. They're traveling around everywhere. I can't imagine Shinsuke Nakamura not having some really amazing stories in here. So if you're a fan of him or just a fan of Strong Style in general, maybe check that out. And I think that's all I have for this side of the catalog. So we're going to flip. flip. Yeah, the wonderful flip. And what do you have? 16. First thing I got on is okay. on page 16. So page 16, we have the alien xenomorph uh, letter opener. So it's oh, the yeah. it's the alien head with the owl tongue, for lack of a better word, pulls yeah. out, which is like the little mouth with the extra te- set of teeth on it. You pull that out as your actual letter opener. So. I feel like that's really a stretch trying yeah. to get a letter opener yeah, out of that's that. A, but. It's a very large and expensive letter opener. Yeah. But, but and I I don't know maybe I should mention the Swedish Chef uh, action figure gift set over on right. page seventeen as well for any Muppets fans out yeah. there. But uh, on eighteen, um, kind of back to something we were talking about earlier, uh, we've got the uh, continuation of the Batman classic TV series busts, and now they're doing Dick Grayson with a small Shakespeare bust. <laughs> so kind of tying into the story Mike was talking about earlier on the show. Um, Again, that's around sixty dollars, so about price like the others. Uh, but again, in with that line looks pretty nice. Uh, there's also a Batman the Animated Series uh, Harley Quinn statue based on the Harley Harley's Holiday, where it has her and the hyenas. And on the next page, we've got the DC Comic Gallery Aquaman PVC diorama. Again, kind of continuing that line. Uh, again, we've some of these you know look pretty nice and they're pretty affordably priced at forty five dollars yeah. compared to what a statue will usually run you. Uh, Might as well talk about the last thing on page nineteen. So we talked about everything else on page okay. nineteen. So you have the Kingdom Hearts mini nates for Tron and the Light Cycle. So that's kind of mm-hmm. cool. My next thing's on 23. Okay, go. All right, so, okay, so Marvel Comic Gallery Cloak and Dagger PVC diorama. They missed it with this statue for sure. How so? Because, well, cloaks, cloak, they have cloak with a very, very narrow. It's like it's wrapped oh, around his yeah. body. And you always see the cloak with right. large, voluminous cloak with a dark right. on the inside. So I, I think they missed the boat on that statue, but uh, just my take on it anyway. So, yeah. Hey, look, is that still priced at. 45, $45. So they I think I'm going to bet that's the compromise. Yeah, then. you've got two figures basically here in a single one. Yeah, so, and with the I can't remember what the free form is that what it's on? I, the, yeah, I yeah. think that's what they're calling it now. Yeah. yeah, so that's probably what they're hoping to pick up some from that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Page 40. Well, on 37, okay. we've got uh, finally got the Batman Batarang statue, and this kind of ties into the Joker card and the Harley Quinn uh, lollipop statue. <laughs> Where it's Batman's hand holding a batarang. Uh, I don't know. It seems like a stretch for a line of statues for me, but you know they look kind of neat. We've had a, you know the Joker and Harley here in the store. Um, I feel like I would assume the Batman only comes with the one batarang. It'd be cool if they kind of switch it up to some different styles. But if you've got those, you probably want to pick up the pick Batman up, yeah, one. Complete the set. You know, so. yeah. So yeah. the dark side yeah. action figure. This is a very impressive looking uh, dark side figure. However, this is also a very expensive yeah. uh, act for an action figure. The retail price on it is one hundred and eighty dollars. Yeah, it looks pretty nice though. But, I, I would like to see this 
in up real close, life yeah. and kind of see the detail in it and stuff. How I didn't even see up. what the size was. So it's, it's, and it's only about eight inches tall, so $180 yeah. for an eight inch figure. Um, but it appears to be very uh, posable anyway. Yeah, so. and he's got like a big cape on him too. It looks like that's removable. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some de- I would assume there's some alternate hands and that kind of thing. It looks like there's at least an alternate face where he has the Omega beams coming out of mm-hmm. his eyes and stuff like that. So. I wasn't for sure if that was a just a special effect for the image or if that was actually going to be. A, yeah, that had better be a thing because it, it looks plastic there in the picture, and yeah. it's sort of an inset. And for $180, there needs to be that, something yeah. for an 8-inch tall figure. <laughs> yeah, okay, so it comes with five interchangeable hands oh, okay. and comes with a stand, it looks like. So, yeah. Hopefully the Omega Beams or something you can kind of snap in or something for yeah. the, to help it look a little cooler on display. Especially for what you're dropping for that. I guess are these 112? Is that a new uh, brand, or has that been around for a while? Do you know? Probably a question I, for Mike. Isn't yeah, it? that Mike would definitely be able to answer that. Um, I feel like I've seen it before, but I don't know how long they've been around. Because yeah, there's, been, I mean, there are several of those 112, and there's like a Blade, there's a, a yeah. Daredevil, there's there are several of those throughout the catalog here. Doctor Strange, so right. Um, uh, page 44, we've got the Ghostbust- the Chronicle Ghostbusters Terror Dog 1 to 1 scale wall mount bust, where it looks like you've hunted one of the dogs from Ghostbusters <laughs> and mounted it on your wall. Uh, it could be yours for the low price of $1,000. Just $1,000. So it just depends on how important that is to you, I guess. Um, on page 50, we've got uh, some marvel products we've got the marvel venom animated style statue and i think this is based on the work of scotty young i think this was a variant cover he did or something like that maybe uh yeah yeah they've got him listed in the solicit okay, yeah, here I but it's sort of a kiddish looking venom mm-hmm. licking a lollipop oh. with spider-man's face on it's it it's kind of neat uh under that we've got the iron man helmet desk accessory and it looks like this is something you could put on your desk, keep uh, post-it notes in or paper clips and different things. Kind of neat. I don't know if it's $150 neat, yeah, I though. I feel like, so, yeah. especially something I'm going to put on my desk at work, I don't want it to be too delicate or valuable. Mm-hmm. Um, we've also got the Marvel Man mm-hmm. Thing Collector's Gallery statue. I'm not sure how big it is. I would hope it's giant size if it's a man thing. Mm. <laughs> I didn't even say, it didn't even give this the height on yeah, that Yeah, I was kind of looking. I couldn't see that. I didn't know if it said a scale or anything, but then it's like, what's to scale with man thing? Well, it says a 1 8 scale. You know, oh, okay. 1 to 8, excuse me. Um, on page 54, we've got the uh, reaction figure of uh, Alfred Hitchcock that's a black and white version. <laughs> if, if you want that, there's also the ET 12 inch foam figure pop, prop replica if you need a ET figure in your life page uh, 55 another 112 figure this is yeah. a call out for mike atchison yeah so uh you know there's a popeye figure so well blow me down is what it says mm-hmm. so <laughs> on uh 59 we've got the terminator genesis uh endoskeleton half scale bust so if you need a half scale terminator just set on your coffee table that can be yours I think I'm good till 117. Okay, so. on 61, we're kind of getting into the Funko section of the catalog. There's the uh, DC Heroes pop of Death. Again, a Vertigo character is sort of a kid's toy, something we mm-hmm. probably wouldn't have seen a few years mm-hmm. ago. But again, if you get the DC ones and you like Death, this is for you. Interestingly, there's also a uh, Rick and Morty Pickle Rick pop, which is just him in his pickle form without the extra limbs and things. So... Some of these pops, I think, are kind of a stretch <laughs> as far as fitting into their format yeah. of pop figures, but it still kind of fits in with the style of that. Uh, on 64, we've got the Ant-Man and Wasp uh, pop figures from the upcoming movie, and they're doing Ant-Man, Wasp, and Ghost. I hope somebody is getting an exclusive on a clear Ghost yeah, figure. Like, something. why Why wouldn't you do that with somebody? And just FYI, uh, Mike just got in a mid-grade copy of the first appearance of Ghost in uh, Iron Man today. Oh, yeah. So, just FYI. Uh, on page 81, we have uh, some Peanuts Ultra Detail figures, Series 8. <laughs> do you need to do Ultra Detail on a Peanuts figure? I don't know, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, series 8, I don't remember seeing these before. I don't no. know if I've just missed them or what, but they're all about uh, $15, and the one with Charlie Brown and Snoopy is 22 so about what you're going to pay for an action figure anymore. No. So not too bad on that. 
on page, what am I trying to get to? Oh yeah, page 92, we've got the uh, MAFX Justice League Bruce Wayne figure, which yeah, that's Bruce Wayne from the Justice League movie, but it's also just kind of a Ben Affleck action figure, <laughs> so if you want a Ben Affleck figure, action figure there you go. if you want to customize him from some of his other roles, there you go, <laughs> it's a pretty good likeness. Uh, if you need a Reindeer Games action figure, then you're halfway there. <laughs> On uh, 95, we've got another ultra detailed figure of Waldo from the Where's Waldo books. <laughs> uh, again, $16, so not bad for an action figure. Um, I feel like this is a figure you could get and just take to work and put up somewhere, somewhere and let and people find, find him. him. Yeah, there you go. You know? Play a little game. So, yeah. Have some fun with that. <laughs> On uh, page 110. There's a lot of Marvel Heroes merchandise here. We've got the Marvel Infinity Gauntlet collectible lapel pin set, and it looks like it's a lot of pins of the different stones from the Infinity Gauntlet. I feel like they should have had a gauntlet one or something, something yeah. some kind of way to tie them all together. A patch to attach them to. Something, something like, like that. that. 117. Uh, so. Yeah, 117 is what I've got. Okay, so I <laughs> The Ace Ventura uh, lapel pin. It's in the bone. It's in the bone. Yeah. I don't know. That one uh, cracks me up. And then you have the Bob Ross uh, Band-Aids. Yeah. <laughs> so if you are a huge uh, Bob Ross fan, you can get some yeah. Band-Aids yeah. for all your boo-boos. Uh, back to the Superman celebration. Saw a few Bob Ross shirts running around there, too. <laughs> so definitely a market for Bob Ross stuff right now. Uh, I'm not till 143. I've okay. got a couple more things. So. On uh, 139 in the trading card section, we've got the Topps 2018 WWE Heritage trading cards, and it's just sort of some old school uh, style trading cards of some of their wrestlers, you know, that are current. So that's kind of a neat thing, I thought, sort of a throwback. Uh, I think what else. And um, yeah, one forty three. I think we're gonna yeah. talk about the same one. So you got to, on page one forty three. You have the orb, uh, which is a Ghost Rider villain, not a character that you would expect to see very often, but they mm -hmm. have an orb T shirt that you can pick up, and it's on one of those cotton heather shirts. So it's actually a pretty nice shirt. Yeah. Why didn't this come out when Original Sin came out? Because that's the last time I've seen him in anything. Has he done any, been in anything since? I don't. Not can't, that I. I feel imagine. like I've maybe seen him just like as a uh, like a one panel character in something, but it may have been something older. I was I was reading. Yeah. So there are also some Craven the Hunter. Yeah, or some it's, it's Giant like a, Man. Is that a Steve Ditko Craven? I think it is. It's kind of hard to tell the yeah, size. It, I think it. But looks it's definitely an old school yeah. looking Craven T shirt. Mm -hmm. Um, we got some Action 1000 shirts, shirts. right after mm -hmm. that, too. Some of the variant covers and things. And Page I, 149, there's a couple of, uh, there's some wallets, but a couple of Star Wars wallets. One that has Millennium Falcon, but the one that's kind of nifty to me is the Han Solo belt buckle wallet. So it's uh, the Han Solo costume-inspired metal badge bifold wallet. So yeah, it's kind of neat. Something else to pick up. Yeah. That's all I got. Yeah, I think that's it for me, too. Okay, so um, this... So I think it'll about wrap us up on this. Yeah. Go so around. if you and you know want to add anything to your pull with list at uh, Campus Comics, uh, come on down to 816 East Main Street, Suite B in Carbondale, Illinois. The phone number is 618-457-6011. And yes, I did have to read that off the business card because I call Mike. I don't call the store because <laughs> I work here. Yeah. And if you're not a pull customer already, think about uh, becoming one. And uh, just remember, you can see uh, both. Berg Comics and Campus Comics at Berg Comics Con August 18th and again at Saluki Con September, I've already forgot the date end of September, like yeah. the last weekend in September I want to say 29th and 30th but last weekend in September Trevor Van Eden will be there and Don Kramer will be at a Berg Comics Con So, yeah. and if you, again if you missed it, our previous episode episode 15, we have an interview with Alex Saviuk that we did at uh, Superman Celebration, anything else to add? Uh, what was the cutoff date for this calendar again? If oh, people want to get their June, orders in, June 29th okay, is so, the cutoff date. So, but so don't if, wait till the last day. Yeah, but you know, if there's something you heard us talk about or something you saw in the catalog you want to check out, order it. It's the best way to guarantee you're going to get it. Exactly. <laughs> you know, there's been books I thought, oh, we'll get a bunch of those at the store. I come in, they're gone. Yep. It happens to the best of us. As long as the publishers don't cancel it, curse you, Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? I think that's about it. Right. We'll have another episode maybe Probably in a couple, in a couple weeks couple or weeks. so. 
Yeah, so if you want to post on Campus Comic Facebook page, so let's suggest a topic you'd like to hear the three of us talk about, feel free to do that. And I guess we'll sign us out here. So this is Scott Reed. You can find me at bergcomics.com. And, of course, that's a B-U-R-G. And, of course, those conventions uh, that I mentioned I'll also be at FWACCON in Lawrenceville, Illinois. How do you spell that real quick? P-W-H-A-C-K. So, so yeah, I definitely yeah. would have got that wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I, well, I typically want to do a P-H instead, but I'm pretty sure yeah. it's P-W-H. And I may be incorrectly spelling it as well. But, <laughs> but I'll have a link on my Berg Comics uh, Facebook page as well for that convention and this is dan brown uh i'm online at detective 651 on twitter deviantart and wordpress where you can find out all my fun stuff that i'm up to and i think that'll do it for this episode we'll see you back here later